This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 from 2019, but how good is it in 2024? When we look at the build of the Surface Pro 7, it's in my opinion one of the best built 2-in-1 devices. It weighs less than 800 grams, which is very light for a laptop, however that's pretty heavy for a tablet. It is made from magnesium alloy and the front has glass. You can also see here the screen which looks very nice but it has big bezels compared to most tablets these days. This was the first Microsoft Surface Pro with a USB-C port, but it also has a normal USB port, the Surface Connect port and on the other side you can see the headphone jack. Another nice thing about the Surface lineup is that under the kickstand you have the ability to put a micro SD card. But sadly it doesn't have a full SD card slot and only one normal USB port can be a bit limiting in my opinion. So if you want to add a mouse but also a USB stick then you can't do that at the same time unless it's a Bluetooth mouse. You can buy them used for around 400 euros but that depends on the condition but also what's on the inside because the Surface Pro 7 has different models. It has an i3, i5 or i7 and it goes from 4 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm using the Intel Core i5 model with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. If you store most of your files in the cloud then the 128 gigabyte model is a good option. But if you have a lot of files that you want to store locally then you definitely want to get the 256 gigabyte model or more. I would definitely recommend you to stay away from the i3 4 gigabyte model configuration because 4 gigabytes of RAM in 2024 is just not enough. It will probably feel slow because with 4 gigabytes of RAM you can't have a lot of programs open at the same time. And the i3 model also comes with worse Intel UHD graphics instead of the Intel Iris graphics. It has a 12.3 inch display on the front with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio and in my opinion the screen looks really nice. And when you are using the device you don't really notice the bezels that much but it can also go bright enough for most places. I've had a lot of laptops that had a dim screen but this one can go really bright but it can also go really low which is a big advantage in my opinion. The screen is only 60Hz but I think for most people including me that isn't an issue. It's of course a tablet so it supports touch, but you can also use the Microsoft Surface Pen. So that's nice if you like to draw. One thing that I dislike is that the oleophobic coating on the screen isn't that good. So that means that if you touch the screen you will get fingerprints on it pretty easily. So you need to clean the device often so you don't get fingerprints on it. However with the hinge you can put the screen low. So I think this is a great tablet if you want to use it for drawing. It officially has support for Windows 11. However, I still keep it at Windows 10, because I prefer that version. It has stereo speakers on the front. It's nice that they are stereo, however, the sound quality isn't the best. It's nice that they are there, but for a laptop they aren't good. For a tablet they are decent though. It also has the ability to attach a keyboard from Microsoft, and that's a really nice option in my opinion, because that thing really makes it feel like a laptop. And most of the time, if you buy it used, it comes included with the keyboard. And the keyboard experience is really nice, it has backlight so it will light up, but the typing also feels great in my opinion. There's also a trackpad which is a pretty good trackpad but I prefer to use a mouse. One thing that I don't like about the type cover is that it can get dirty pretty easily. After a lot of use it will get dirty and you have to replace it and that's really disappointing because the type covers aren't cheap in my opinion. One thing that I really like about the Surface Pro is that it has a facial recognition feature called Windows Hello. It can unlock the device by using your face and it has a dedicated sensor that will recognize you and it's very secure but also fast. I wish more devices had this. The unique feature of this device is of course that it's a 2-in-1 so you can use it as a tablet or as a laptop. And it's a good laptop in my opinion but it's definitely not the best tablet. It can run full desktop software. However, they aren't always meant to be used in a tablet form factor. You can still browse the internet, but I just noticed that I don't use it as a tablet that much. Part of that is because it's a little bit heavy, but also that the software doesn't feel like it's meant for a tablet. Because it is a desktop software, of course. So you really need to consider, do you need the 2-in-1 form factor? Because if you don't need it, then you are probably better off buying another laptop. Because they will have better performance for the same amount of price. I've been using the Surface Pro 7 a lot recently, so the battery life has definitely gone down and I can only get a few hours out of it, so it's definitely not the best. I used to be able to get around 4 hours with it, but because I used it a lot it's now only about 2 hours, and that's definitely not so good, so I always need to carry a charger with me. 
And it will really depend, because if you buy one that hasn't been used a lot, then you will probably get a much better battery life than what I did. I bought one that was already used a lot, and then I also used it a lot, so that's why my battery life is so bad. Also, from what I've heard, is that the Surface Pro 7 Plus has a much better battery life than the Surface Pro 7. The Surface Pro 7 has a stereo microphone, and it doesn't sound that good because it has some noise cancelling technology that will try to only pick up your voice, but it sometimes sounds a bit distorted, but you can turn it off in the settings. Now let's talk about the performance of the Surface Pro 7. I think for most basic things it's more than good enough. You can do some basic internet browsing, but also making PowerPoint presentations or a Teams call. And you can have multiple Google Chrome tabs open and it will still run fine. However, it's definitely not meant for anything advanced, like video editing. My i5 model is definitely not meant for stuff like that. If you get the i7 with 16 GB of RAM, it might be able to handle it a little bit better, but keep in mind that it's in a thin and light form factor, which means there's less room for cooling. So while it is possible, it isn't a great experience. Another thing is that the graphics are integrated in the CPU, so there isn't a dedicated graphics card. This means that the graphics card isn't good, so it isn't meant for gaming. The i3 and i5 model also don't have a fan inside, so that means it's very quiet. But the i7 does have one, but that also means you will get better performance. I also noticed that the back of my Surface Pro 7 i5 model will get a little bit warm after a while, especially when having multiple tabs open and doing a lot of things on it. If you are using it as a tablet, you will notice that the back will get a bit warm, but if you are using it as a laptop, you won't notice it, because the keyboard doesn't have the processor and all the other components in it. It's all in the tablet. And you might be wondering, why would I get an older Surface Pro 7 instead of a newer Surface Pro? or a newer Surface Go. Well, the first thing obviously is the price. The Surface Pro 7 is a lot cheaper, especially when you buy it used. You can definitely find some really good deals online these days, but that's not the only reason. The nice thing is that this Surface Pro still has a micro SD card slot, unlike the newer Surface Pros. But it also has more ports, so it still has a headphone jack, which some newer Surface Pros don't have, but also a full USB-A port. And it's really disappointing in my opinion that they removed those ports in the newer versions. Also, the Surface Go has a smaller screen size compared to the Pro. So, should you buy the Surface Pro 7 in 2024? I think it really depends on what your needs are. If you really want that 2-in-1 form factor, then this is a good option. However, if you don't need that 2-in-1 form factor, there are other devices out there with better price to performance ratio. But the Surface has a nice touchscreen and also a good webcam, decent microphones and a good build quality. Just keep in mind that the battery life isn't the best and also that it isn't meant for gaming or video editing. And also the back will get a little bit hot after a while. But other than that, I still like it. Do you already own one or are you planning on buying one? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching.